This is a 39-year-old uh, female who has a history of mechanical symptomatology, a lot of catching. She uh, actually underwent an intraarticular injection with lidocaine at the time of her MRI and had significant relief from her mechanical symptoms for about, about a week, actually, and then her symptoms came back. We're looking through the anterolateral portal, and then my shaver is in the anterior portal, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my capsule a little bit going to do a little bit of a capsulectomy. If I've got a good view here, then this is a very safe interval to open up the capsule a little bit to allow a little bit more manipulation and uh, translation around the joint. We can see the, starting with the posterior labrum, that's a perfectly normal posterior labrum, normal femoral articular head. And then as we come around the lateral acetabulum, this is the lateral corner here. Take a shot, please. And we can see here on the video on the, uh, in the corner the fluoroscopic images tell us where we are. And we can see that right at the corner there, there's a start of some degeneration. And then if we probe this tissue there, there's a little bit of articular chondral delamination here. And a lot of times on these patients, what I tend to do is we'll do a little bit of a chondroplasty. So we'll start our debridement here of the chondral delamination part. So we're gonna take the ring curette so we're going to take a little bit of this chondral delamination. And what we try to do is delineate a normal articular margin here. This looks like it's starting to get pretty normal, very solid, up to about there. We can see that's a little bit of this labral degenerative tissue. And then just beyond it is where the normal labrums will elevate that labrum out a little bit in a, in a couple of minutes. This ring curette's about 5 millimeters. So we're taking 5 to 7 millimeters of cartilage out. We'll trim it back. So now we've got a pretty good area here that we can microfracture. This is a standard chondral awl that allows us to do a little bit of a chondroplasty here. Take one more. This almost looks like a little area of cystic degeneration maybe because I can perforate right into it. We'll do one more pick. We don't really want to undermine this too much because we're going to put an anchor in here. We're going to take a 30 degree angled elevator and then we're going to gently try to preserve this labrum is pretty diminutive in this patient so we want to make sure and preserve as much of the labrum as we can so I'm going to very slowly start elevating this with this sharp angle until we get a nice bony interface here. And this is fairly degenerative tissue here as you can see I'm kind of really slipping into it very effortlessly. So typically, I, I think if it comes off that easily, you should probably detach it anyway and give it a good stable uh, rim. So what we'll probably do is try to preserve that, put our circumferential stitch roughly in this area here. The idea here is to preserve the, the circumferential fibers as much as possible. I think if you leave that, if you leave this tissue here without fixing it, it's gonna potentially catch again. So what we're gonna do is put the anchor here and bring the tissue back away from the joint and still maintain some of that labral seal effect. And again, we have to be very careful here not to, not to finish this tear circumferentially, otherwise the repair is not gonna be good. This is the hip specific guide for the 3.5 millimeter push lock and it's a little bit longer. It makes hip arthroscopy or hip labral repairs a little bit more predictable. So what we'll try to do here is slide this. I'm thinking about where my suture ultimately is going to be, and it's probably going to be in this neighborhood here. So we need to work around where the, uh, where the drill is going to go. I'm going to make one little punctate start here with my sharp trocar. And occasionally the angle just isn't very good. So what I might actually do in this patient is I think I'm going to go above it and then bring that labrum away from the joint, which is really what I want to do. I want to avoid any kind of mechanical irritation. So I know it's going to be immediately behind my labrum. I go ahead and take a image here, you can see down in the left corner that we have a good angle and if I miss in any direction here I'm going to skive off the articular margin and not not cause any uh, any damage to the articular surface. So now we're going to pull the, uh, the trocar out and we're going to make our drill hole. Now what I like to do is I run the drill about halfway down shot please and I confirm that it's still divergent from the joint and then I finish my my drilling. So now we've got a very, very stable hole there that I know is not going to be a problem. So we're going to reestablish the slotted cannula here in position. 
The technique that we're going to use to pass our suture is going to use the bird beak device. So this is the loop of the, of the suture. I've just folded it over in half, and then I'll grab my loop. So what I want to do is try to get as much substantial tissue as I can here. So I'm going to try to roll as much of that tissue back as I possibly can. So that looks like a pretty good bite. Now once I've delivered some of that loop, then I simply pull my device out, and then I come on the articular side, and I can grab my stitch. So now we'll deliver the loop outside the skin, and then if we take the two ends that we previously, the two tails, we're going to pull them into the loop, and then simply slide the loop back into the joint. And now we should have a nice circumferential stitch, and I just load the knot pusher along one of the loops in case it's hung up in any soft tissue make sure and deliver it without too much uh, trauma to the to the remaining labral tissue. So now we've got a nice solid piece of labrum here. Now we're going to be ready for anchor delivery. This is the 3.5 millimeter push lock anchor which is a peak material. So now we've got our cinch stitch in place and the anchor is ready to go and one of the tricks here is to make sure that we don't have any kind of convolution. So I'm going to deliver it into the joint and make sure that I know my angle of how I'm going to deliver this device. And now I have to walk my way over, and I'm going to try to find my, my drill. So now I've found my, uh, my entry point, and then I confirm radiographically, shot please, that I'm in the same, roughly the same parallel. And then I advance my, my cannula as far as it will go, and that essentially locks down my stitch. Now it's done advancing with regards to the tightening of the labrum. And then I'm going to impact the shaft portion of this device, of the push lock. Shot, please. And again, confirming the same orientation. And then once we're done seating the anchor, we turn it, we simply turn counterclockwise about six or seven times. And after the six or seven times, we start pulling, pulling back along the, the shaft of the device. And now our device is engaged. We're going to use the long fiber wire cutter. We're going to slide right up to our knot, and we're going to cut it. And so now we have no knot and no mechanical irritation with any part of the, of the device. So now we've got the, the completed repair here, and we can see that the, our anchor insertion is immediately behind this center point where I wanted to put it. And now our labrum is tucked back away from the joint. There's still a good amount of labrum here. There's a little bit of early fraying here, but I don't think there's any detachment. And this amount of tissue should probably be okay with respect to any kind of significant overhang. And then we, here's our chondroplasty here, and there's a nice stable interface everywhere. No significant delamination left behind. And the rest of the joint looks normal. Postoperatively, this patient will be non-weight bearing for four weeks. We'll probably begin, we will begin physical therapy within one week postoperatively, and we limit their rotation, we limit their no hyperflexion, no extension, just a neutral, and then internal and external rotation are very limited to only 10 or 15 degrees so that you don't have a lot of stress around the labrum.